still there. <laughs> Excuse me. My preference um, is to really have a lockdown script um, pretty early on in the process. It's not always the case for animation, I think. You know, you can, it, it can evolve uh, through storyboarding, but because I'm writing it and directing it, I have a, a, a much clearer idea up front of what the whole thing should be. So I think it's easier for him to get his head around my vision. So my job is to create a world for them to live in comfortably. Because the last thing you want is them to look out of place. And you don't want to be taken out of the story either. So those those things have to really meld together. And there's about 60 locations. So there's a new location every like four or five minutes in the film. You know, in most films you return to places that you've established. We don't have a return. I mean, there's one scene where they go back at the end of the movie. We've got so many locations. Usually, like traditionally, in stop motion, the stories that you told were, they were a little bit more limited in their scope. And that, that's because you had to be. You were limited by the size of your puppet and the size of your set. And with more digital technology being used, you can kind of push down those walls a little bit. You can have digital set extensions. You can have digital extras. Um, so it's opened the world up a bit. And it's surprising. There really isn't as much digital stuff as I think. Now, mind you, everything goes through the computer because there's cleanup, there's rig removal. I mean, every shot is, a, is an effect shot, ultimately. But what you're seeing on the screen is still about 90% physical, which is a big number, really. It's definitely our most ambitious project to date. It's the biggest in scope and scale. I think, I think it's the funniest. It's a little bit Indiana Jones, a little bit Sherlock Holmes. Um, a little bit of Ray Harryhausen creatures thrown in. Big, bright, bold, and very colorful. It's definitely our most colorful movie to date. We haven't really done a film as colorful as this. Uh, I also tried to make the film have a really nice color cohesion. So I did that by um, assigning each individual location a very limited color palette of its own to help keep them separate from each other. So as you go around, you'll notice sets have a predominant kind of color. But you know, look at some of these props, they're amazing. And they look good close up, but then remember they get projected up to be 30 or 40 feet high. So they go they go through a lot of scrutiny. I think for this movie, it's um, upon subsequent viewings, and we've seen it a lot, you start to notice um, the quieter moments and the way our two characters look at each other or reaction shots, and they're just very, um, we're really proud of the subtle um, stuff that we're bringing to the screen. And we do seem to want to continue to push the boundaries of stop motion as an art form mm -hmm. and animation as an art form. And there is a little bit of pressure to do that. It doesn't necessarily mean pressure to innovate and come up with something new for its own sake, but whatever, you know, whatever Chris is writing, I, we don't want him to be uh, hampered by the story he wants to bring to the screen. Um, you have killed my grandmother! Quick, quick, quick! Someone should give her the kiss of life! You're the man for the job. How's my breath? <laughs>